Armoury Forger, despite not being a proper sequel, manages to be more of a sequel than any Armour game to date. This is helped by how it's returned back to where it all began, back to Operation Flashpoint's era of weapons and conflict, and back to the island of Everon. And I've enjoyed revisiting all of the places that we still play at Lands, but now no longer constrained by all the graphical limitations of that ancient engine. This is what 20 years of hardware advancements looks like. And more surprisingly for me, it's the first armour game that I feel has significantly advanced the gameplay. Operation Flashpoint, Armour, Armour 2 and Armour 3 may all pretend to be different games, but they're virtually identical beneath the surface. Their worlds feel equally slippery, the buildings equally empty, and even their vehicles handle similarly and are bugged in the same ways. Even the HUD has made very little effort to change over these past 20 years. But Reforger finally changes all of this. I haven't spent long in this game yet, but it's clear to me that this is the first time since the series began where they've seriously gone back to the drawing board and have reworked everything whilst building a suitable engine to accommodate it all. The loading times are minuscule, both to boot the game up and to load a match itself, and that feels great. And the engine handles the jumps and scale brilliantly, easily zooming straight out into the sky and then back onto a pebble on the beach again. Even though you will spend most of your time in this game slogging about at a sleep-inducing rate, it's still nice to know that the engine is equally well equipped to cater for the aircraft pilots. You now have proper animations for boarding vehicles, and the general movement, gunplay and jump button now makes you feel a lot more connected with the world than the older games did. It's still armour, but it is finally starting to borrow the best bits from other game series as well. Much like the Far Cry and Crisis series, Operation Flashpoint and armour started out as being the same thing. I still refer to it as Operation Flashpoint because that's the one that I fell in love with, but the team behind the original Operation Flashpoint lost the rights to the name and went on to make the armour series instead as spiritual sequels. They later rebranded the original Operation Flashpoint to be Armour Cold War Assault, which further confused things. Meanwhile, Codemasters retained the rights to the Operation Flashpoint name, and with it, produced two sequels of their own. The first one was Dragon Rising, and the second was the abysmal Red River, which I believe could only have been made the way it was to spite the original developers and to kill the Operation Flashpoint name outright. I thought it was terrible back then, but I just looked up a video of the first mission again and I think it somehow got even worse. Compared with that one, Dragon Rising is actually rather good. I mean, it isn't Operation Flashpoint, but it had a good stab at being something halfway between it and more mainstream shooter games. It's just a shame the enemies could see through the long grass everywhere, which made it literally impossible. Its world was probably even larger than Armour's was, and it's such a shame the editing tools were rubbish and that the single player campaign was limited to just a few spots because I really wanted to explore that world. I feel like its development time was cut short and they were never able to make it the game it could have been. But despite all that, I could still see that the game was good at the bits that Armour wasn't. The engine was great at rendering massive worlds and the frame rate was always high and super responsive, and the game did vehicles and the HUD in a far better way than Armour ever did. I always wished that they could have combined the best of both series, and it looks like with Reforger, they've finally done that. Vehicles now feel like real, physical, heavy things with wheels, instead of whatever they were meant to be in the earlier games. But that doesn't mean they're easier to control now. The truck is significantly harder, but it feels fairer, and it's more fun than ever to launch your Jeep off the side of a mountain. It used to be common for me to just explore a new open world game when it first came out, to discover the ways in which it pushed the envelope and all that, but I haven't found myself doing that too much recently. However, I am doing that with Reforger. There's something about the way this world is constructed that makes each track, each building and each forest inviting. Like I don't know what I'll find, but I'll still be left pleasantly surprised. And I suppose it's helped by the fact that this game does everything properly. It isn't like other series, which may tease at freedom, but will still try to pull you back into the battlefield if you try to escape. Or maybe they'll deliberately block off accessing buildings because they're only set dressings. Armour Reforged doesn't do this though, because everything on the island of Everon is real. The sun does move across the sky, the clocks do move around, the weather does change, and I could be unfairly and instantly murdered by a distant hidden sniper at any second. And I greatly appreciate all that. I found myself getting flashbacks to Armour 1. The colours and overblown HDR in this game is very similar, as is the draw distance improvement it brings over the previous entries. There's just something about this game that makes me want to go prone in a bunch of nettles and to admire the subsurface scattering. Yet graphically, it's not like even this one is cutting edge. It doesn't have ray traced reflections or contact hardened shadows, but the game knows what's important, and it does that stuff right. The whole place just feels sufficiently and uniformly detailed, no matter how close you get to an object. Gravel gets parallax mapping to make it look 3D. There are slippery looking rocks and beaches, layers of dead leaves coating the forest. It even does that thing where clouds actually cast shadows. This means that, even on a mostly sunny day, 
you'll still be occasionally plunged into darkness as a cloud rolls overhead. It's something I don't see enough of in these types of games, and it makes a big difference to how real the world feels. The shadows on the ground do seem to line up with the clouds in the sky, although speeding things up highlights the limitations of how accurately this is depicted, as the cloud cast shadows begin to stutter and shift abruptly. And there's an awkward gap between the close-up shadows and the more distant ones. So shadows are an area where it's two steps forward and one step back for the Armour franchise. I've heard good things about the lighting at night. I know that the Armour series has always taken pride in supporting dozens of different light sources and all that, but I don't know if I've ever actually been impressed with it in practice. And indeed, I struggled to set up a scenario that showcased it well for this video. Muzzle flashes proved to be too dim a light source, and even burnt out vehicles only produce a feeble amount of light. I like that they featured lightning strikes, although these don't seem to cast light either, and it quickly became apparent just how limited the vehicles in this game are. The list of them looks impressive, until you realise it's only really like four or five different vehicles, each bulked out in multiple paint styles. There's only one type of tank in this game, and no aircraft to speak of. What is this armour? This isn't like you. And no boats either, so I can't even race them down mountains like I used to in the good old days. There needs to be a lot more stuff, and I suspect Armoury Forger will be the platform the developers use to design all these things with, and then we, as the players, get to be the guinea pigs that help bug test them. And please can we have breakable trees and pylons back? It looks great when you destroy a fence or smash up those roadside bollards, yet for some reason tanks can be stopped by a twig like this. Even Operation Flashpoint did best than this, provided you didn't venture into its adamantium forests. If destructible foliage isn't added to Reforger, then this game will be dead to me. So while some critical features are still missing, this title already has one massive advantage over previous ones. This time around, I finally feel like I know what the developers wanted from this series. All this time, it's felt like they've just built big, generic military sandboxes and have left it to the players to try and make good use of it. But not so this time. Armour 3 had a very long lifespan, but over that time, the developers evolved the title and experimented with lots of new features, and it feels like Reforger is the product of these, having taken the best of them and implemented them from the get-go, making Reforger's core gameplay far more confident about what it wants to be that being a dynamic, area control, base building, war simulation. Armour Reforger may have a long way to go, but it already feels like it knows what it wants to become. But is this what I want it to be? I still play Armour like a single player game, or to battle through scenarios with a friend or two, and Reforger doesn't have any of this, it is very much designed around massively multiplayer scenarios. To get what I want from it, I'd have to plonk a load of enemies on the map, to give them objectives, and then to dive in into play before they all get killed. And yet, I'm strangely excited about all of this, because Armour has always been about trying to simulate a large, dynamic battlefield, but with tools and game modes which don't seem designed to allow for that. But this time around, the tools and game modes are. We now just need more stuff and features. It's already got the bot support, which is normally the thing that games lack these days. All it needs now is for you to be able to pause time in the editor and to be able to save and load scenarios, and it'll be exactly what I wanted from the older games in the series. Imagine any scenario in this game being able to be played by any number of players and to be able to be modified in real time. I could play it through by myself, I could invite a friend to play through it with me. They could be playing it alone while I'm there adjusting it in the editor, in real time. The idea of that doesn't just enhance the multiplayer, it also improves the single player too, provided they actually add a save and load feature for you to be able to save the state of the world, which right now I can't seem to find anywhere, which is a shame. So in a way, Reed Forger is just the thing to help blur the line between single and multiplayer, in a way that even satisfies what I want, and no game cares about what I want anymore. Armour Reforger costs £25, and I'm reading a lot of people questioning whether it's worth that. There are a few aspects to this, all of which are understandable, but none of which particularly matter to me. Firstly, right now, there are apparently horrendous problems with the online components in the NetReg, which is a fair enough thing to complain about, but at the same time is exactly the sort of issue that Early Access is supposed to test for and to address, so I'm not too concerned about that and suspect fixing it will be the developer's top priority right now. But the bigger question is, what sort of lifespan will a game like this have when Armour 4 is already looming on the horizon as being the proper sequel that everybody's waiting for? Well, for me, this is the proper sequel that I've been waiting for. It keeps the nostalgic bits the same and changes the bits that I've been hoping would have been improved upon long ago. It is very much a well-crafted sandbox but without much content for it yet, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. Like I said, the way I play this game is very different from how most people do, and I think that even in its current state, it won't be long before my friends and I get our money's worth from it. Just let us load and save scenarios, please. So I suppose how happy I'll be about Reforger depends on the state of the game come Armour 4's release, and then after that, I suspect this game's future will be heavily dependent on what Armour 4 is like and what sort of features that game provides. 
I'm terrible for typing up video scripts and then never actually getting around to finishing the videos. Less than a month ago I typed up one about the seagull in the original Operation Flashpoint. I'll still try to get that video out at some point because it's more relevant now than ever, but the general gist of it was, Operation Flashpoint was a success to me despite so many parts of it being poorly made, and despite it not really being compatible with what I wanted from it. Some user made levels required 30 players to be playable, others didn't let you respawn or take control of characters when you really should have been able to, and the way Reforger is designed with its control points and respawn zones completely resolves the biggest problem that I had with the earlier games. To me, Armour Reforger is Operation Flashpoint without the poorly made parts. It feels like the developers are finally taking the development of a military simulation seriously and aren't just making another Armour game but in a different setting. I remember reading, before Armour 1 came out, about how the developers wanted to construct a massive, dynamic, island-wide battle that raged on and on. At the time, I envisioned all that being single player, but I don't think they ever intended it to be like that. But we might both get what we want from this title, we're just approaching it from different angles. Yes, it might be intended to be massively multiplayer, but the bot support's still there, and my dream of being a loner amidst a massive, raging battle all being dynamically played out across the entire island may still come true.